Hello, welcome to today's episode. Um, let's talk about scanning, shall we? When I started my journey on film photography, the big question I always had was how do I scan my pictures? Because I, I more or less understand the idea of developing your own film, but how do I put the film into a computer? So I started researching and at that time the best option was to purchase a scanner. So I purchased uh, Epson. 4490. I was super happy, I used it for a bunch of years and then a friend of mine uh, showed me the wonders of the pack and scanner. That's what the labs would use to scan your film. You would send your film to a lab and then they would give you like a CD. Remember those days? CDs? They'll give you a CD with your pictures and those pictures will usually be scans from a pack and scanner. One of the good things with the pack and scanner is that it's extremely automatic. So you put the film in the pack and scanner and then the scanner will just scan the whole roll and give you the pictures. Pack and scanners are going scarce by the day. So it's really expensive to find one in really good working condition like the one that I have. And if your pack and fails, the, um, it's, it's getting more and more expensive to repair. So having a pack and scanner is actually makes a lot of sense if you're shooting a lot of 35 millimeter film. The issue is that I not, I'm not shooting that much 35 millimeter film, to be honest. I'm shooting more medium format now. So my solution for scanning negative films on my Epson scanner was using the Negative Lab Pro. And the Negative Lab Pro is a add-on to the uh, Lightroom. I used it for the first time in the uh, Great Wall video, which if you remember, I'm gonna leave the uh, link over here so you can see that video. Those were the first scans that I used uh, with the Negative Lab Pro and I really like the results. So I said, okay, maybe I'm gonna try and use my um, Canon EOS M to scan the film and I could use that by a stand and some kind of holder. Let's see what's out there. And so I found this carrier I'm gonna show it to you. And so I found online this carrier. This is the negative supply carrier. And I saw this and I, it looked super cool. And I was like, I wanna try this. So I wrote to the guys at negative supply, like, hey man, I wanna try this. And they give me a discount. They give me a 50% discount. So whatever I bought on their store, they give me a big discount so I could, you know, buy more stuff. So I bought this thing, this thing, which is for, you know, placing the holder on top of it and the light, which is, it goes like underneath. So it goes like this and you put the hole around top and that's how it works. I also purchased the stand. This is the stand. Like I purchased the old stand. They have like a newer version, which is like full metal and with a black, you know, finish. And like, it looks much more luxurious, but I don't know. I quite like this thing that it looks like just like a simple wood with like this thing on top. I don't know. I like it. It's just a stand. I don't need like, something super complicated. So I bought all of this. Now, bear in mind, all these things are kind of, exp I, not kind, they are expensive. Like Negative Supply is a boutique store, I would say. They make these things for scanning. They have a lot of accessories, um, but it's an expensive uh, purchase. So I spent a lot of money on this and I had a discount. So I know this is expensive. At the same time, you can tell it's like a very well, made product. It's, it's not a cheap thing. It's going to last for a lifetime. And it, ha it has so many details. Like, let me show you. Like, for example, the carrier, the 120 carrier, if you open it, oh, <laughs> it has a mask. <laughs> so it has a mask that you can use. It has a six by six max, a six mask, a six by seven, a six by nine. And it, it, it's like quite it's got quite a lot of space. So you simply put the mask there and you close it and everything is like so well made. Well, it, for starters, it's it's made out of metal and it has like details like in here, it's got some kind of, you know, soft felt or I don't know what the name of this material is, but it's made so it will never scratch your film. And it's, it's, are those little details that make the whole difference? It's magnetic, so it will stay in place. This works like a charm, like this really works well. It's something that you can have on your shelf and you're not be embarrassed. Like, oh yeah, that's my, that's my, that's my scanner. Here's the thing, scanning 120 negative film with an Epson scanner is a pain. It's terrible. I just, it, it, it doesn't really work. I mean, it works like at the end I made it work, but it's so time consuming and it's not fun. And scanning slide film, it's another pain because the program gives you like a very contrasty image. And there were some images that I was completely unable to scan them using my Epson scanner. When I use my digital camera, I was able to recover a lot of details that I was unable to recover with an, uh, with the Epson scanner. And it just works. I used some 
uh, films that were heavily underdeveloped uh, slide film and it works fine. I scanned films that were heavily overexposed in black and white and it works fine. And you know, truth be told, I'm actually amazed how well this works. I tried to capture this image, but it was underexposed and it just I was unable to scan it with the Epson scanner. It just didn't work at all. So now what I did was taking a picture with the this exposure and then I took another picture overexposing the the well positive film in this case and then I was able to combine both and make some kind of HDR image and look like all the details are here and this is something I can do uh, scanning with this setup and I was absolutely unable to do with the Epson that would have consumed so much time and in this case it just took me a few seconds so there you have it another reason why this is awesome um, I just put the camera on top of it place the um, the film underneath and scan, take one picture, move to the next one, take another picture, move to the next one. And it's a really easy process. It's not very time consuming. I can scan a whole roll in a few minutes. Okay, so right now what you're seeing is the um, image that will be present and the negative. So I need to focus it correctly. And once I have a sharp focus, I just scan that one. And then I go to my next frame this image and then I go to the next one, take this image and so on and so forth. I mean, you don't need to buy the negative supply carrier to make it happen, but it actually makes everything kind of super easy to do. There's also the Lomo, there is a Lomo thing that I don't remember the name. And you can make your own carrier, but truth be told, I decided to purchase this for several reasons. One, because I'm very clumsy. Like, I can't do do-it-yourself kind of stuff. Like, I'm unable to build anything. The other thing is because I wanted to have something that would look good. So I bought that one, and it's expensive, but it does the job really well, and I can tell it's gonna last for years. The big downside with this is that I cannot scan 35 millimeter. So I can only scan 120. And for scanning 120, Ah, beautiful, amazing, love it, great. I also got a mask for scanning 4x5, which is also ah, beautiful, amazing, love it, great. But I can't scan 35mm. Uh, Negative Supply does another carrier for 35mm and I don't feel like spending another, you know, well, I'm gonna put the price over here, so <laughs> so you know the real price. This is the real price and I don't, I don't know if I wanna pay, you know, another carrier to scan my other film. The good thing about scanning with a, with a digital camera is that there's a lot of people trying different things. So for example, my friend Ethan Moses, uh, he makes cameras, if you remember. He's a, he's a mad genius, he makes weird things. And, and he made uh, the Mongoose, which is a, um, a system for scanning 35 millimeter. Uh, if you have a stand, the Mongoose is just a model that you connect to your camera and it'll just basically do what the Packon scanner does. It connects to your camera and you tell the camera, okay, uh, you said to the module, scan this film and then the carrier will automatically, you know, see where the uh, film has some edges and then um, organize that, take the measure and then tell the camera, okay, here's a new frame and you move to the next one. Here's a new frame and it will just do automatically. Now we just take a picture. And now we have a picture, I advance. Go to the next frame and take the next shot. And that's the whole thing. Scanning slide film with the Epson is really hard. The results are never quite good. And the Packon scanner does not really support slide film. So scanning with the digital camera and getting this kind of results, man, I am so happy. Look at the, look at the quality of this scans, man. This is like slide film and it looks so nice. Hello, Editing Get here. I'm just working on the video and I realized I didn't quite explain one of the main things of uh, using this setup. So the big thing is using the uh, digital camera to scan the Vision 3500T film. So I tried that film many times and scanning it with the Epson scanner is absolutely crappy. It doesn't work at all. And scanning with the Packon scanner I, like gave me good results, but it wasn't good enough. Like there was still a lot of color correction to be done and it, it never actually worked the way I wanted it to work. Uh, and just working with the 
with this setup it, it works just perfect man so i'm gonna show you a little bit of the process of how i do it let me show you first issue is the color correction now to color correct your negatives i just grab the border of the negative and then i use that for the neutral and the next step is to crop it so i don't i don't get this um, the borders of the negative because i don't like how they look so i'll just crop them and after that once it's perfectly cropped there you have it and i go to my negative lab pro and convert the negative and kablam there you go and now i just uh, select everything more or less neutral and then you have it the colors are great i don't need to do anything else i know it that it may not seem like much but one of the big grimes, one of the big problems that I had with Vision 3500T is that scanning it with an Epson scanner, it looked super contrasty and it looked terrible. And with the Packon scanner, color correcting is extremely difficult. So now using this setup is very, very easy. Uh, just be aware that once you apply the negative Lab Pro add-on, uh, the controls go backwards. So the exposure, when you move it to the right, it will decrease the exposure. When you move it to the left, it will increase. Like it's, it, at the beginning it's kind of weird, but then you get used to it pretty quickly. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have to do. Uh, and it's color corrected and it looks great. Um, I made a review of this film. I'm gonna leave the link up there so you can see it. Um, and yeah, th that was my big comment when I was doing that review, but look at the result, man. Just this kind of result was impossible with the Packon or the Epson scanner. Look at the definition, look at those colors, man. I just love it. I mean, Ethan Moses made the Kickstarter for Among Us a few months ago and I was supposed to talk about the Among Us and make a video about it, but I was unable because I was waiting for my negative supply things. Well, you know, the situation of the world is not very easy. At the same time, shipping has become increasingly difficult for some companies, uh, especially independent companies. So people like the guys at Negative Supply are having problems uh, sending their stuff. So I ordered them in August and things arrived in uh, mid-November so it took them a long time to deliver me the stuff I don't know how the waiting times are right now I've been experimenting with scanning with these things I've been experimenting with scanning um, 120 with the negative supply um, carrier and I've been experimenting scanning 35 millimeter with the mongoose from Ethan Moses and it works great both things work great because it's super easy it's just one digital camera placed on a stand looking downwards and then just take your picture that's all you gotta do if you know how to take a picture in real life you know how to scan an image on a negative for scanning 120 i can absolutely use my canon eos m and the 22 millimeter f2 lens that comes with the camera i don't need to buy anything i can just use the camera with the kit lens and it works amazingly i don't need to do anything but for scanning 35 millimeter, since it's smaller and I don't have a macro lens, I had to buy like extension tubes. So I'm using a 50 millimeter 1.4 lens that I already had, and I'm using that with some macro adapters and that's what I'm using. If you don't have that, you gotta contemplate that into the expenses. If you already have the camera, but you don't have the lenses, uh, check out how much will you spend on lenses because that's a that's an expense that you need to take into consideration and if you already have the all the basic things you just gotta buy you know the stand and the carrier and a light and you're good to go truth be told i don't know the difference between this light and the lights that sell on amazon which are like usually lights for drawing like i don't know the difference man i really don't maybe they're colored differently maybe the ones for drawing have like gaps in between and this one doesn't i don't know it's like <laughs> it's like in this novish idea of scanning drum scanning is like the thing and then everything else is like second and third tier and like and trash tier is like dslr scanning that's like the trash and in my experience that's not the case like the results i've achieved scanning with my EOS M, which is an old camera, are amazing. <laughs> Truth be told, I've never been able to achieve that quality with the other scanners. Like the, the scans that I have with my camera are probably the best scans that I've had. So that's just my experience. I don't wanna say it's gonna be your experience and like throw away all your scanners, but that's more or less where I am at the moment. The guys at Negative Supply, they also sent me another stand. So I have two of these. I have this one. This is mine. I will not give you this one, but I have another one. 
I have another stand um, that it's sealed, it's on its box and it's never been opened and it will be for one of you. So I'm gonna be giving away one of these stands. I'm gonna be posting the uh, contest. Uh, it's gonna be a raffle and I'm gonna be talking about it on my Instagram. So if you wanna be part of the raffle and you wanna participate in there, go to my Instagram. Uh, it's at Ed Pavez and then you can um, yeah, you can follow me, but it's not mandatory to follow me. Like I don't, I don't like those ruffles when you need to follow accounts in order to participate. Like you don't, you don't need to follow me. Like it'll be great. Thank you for following, but you don't need to. So I want to give a big shout to the guys at Negative Supply for giving me a discount of 50% on their products, which is super good. And I also want to give a big shout to my guy, my man Ethan Moses for creating the Mongoose module for scanning and for just. I don't know, making weird things and always trusting me. So if you want to purchase one of the mongoose or you want to see what Ethan is doing, go to his website. Um, Camera Dactyl is the website, so you can go check out his stuff. He's always making new things. And I think he has a new project coming on its way and he told me about it. I can't tell you, but it's gonna be pretty cool. If you want to go and visit my Patreon and support me on Patreon, that'll be amazing. Thank you so much. And so in case you don't know, I have scenes for sale on my online store. And um, I have, for example, A Bridge of Strangers, which is a project shot in 120 in London and Hastings. I have Several Hours Ahead, which is a project I shot in Tokyo. And I have Violent Empire, which is a project and film shot in Chile in the uh, uprisings. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, if you want to purchase the scenes, go to my online store. That'll be amazing. Thank you so much for your support, for being here. I hope you liked the video and I will see you super soon. Bye bye. Whew, man, I had like five seconds left on the memory of my camera. Beep, 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 beep.